So after having a good look at HPC or high performance computing, it's time to take a look at RDMA cluster network. Now, guys, uh, you might remember I told you that what is a high performance compute, right? I, I, as I told you previously, like if you have, let's say, one computer, right? One computer is doing some work for you and you think, oh, I need actually and you put actually 5000 computers and put them in a cluster, right? So obviously you can get more work done and within less time. So that is the whole concept behind high performance compute. The other thing I told you about uh, high performance compute was that in high com uh, performance compute, you normally have a cluster of kind of interconnected, uh, you can say computers. Now th that's all good. Like you, ha you have brought your fastest CPU, GPUs here, but what if your network is not uh, good enough, right? So obviously this becomes a bottleneck and to resolve that, um, we have got RDMA cluster network, right? So what is this RDMA, first of all? So RDMA stands for Remote Direct Memory Access. Now, if we again um, uh, do the uh, divide and conquer, so you, you can see it's a remote, right? So it means it's not local. You're not doing something within, uh, within the same computer. It means you are do doing from one computer to another remote computer, right? Then it says Direct Memory Access. So remotely, you are accessing the, uh, the memory of the other computer. And that's what is the beauty of RDMA is. So the RDMA cluster networks are specialized in network configurations designed for high performance compute, right? As I explained you here that if you are having high performance compute, you have interconnected uh, computers. If your network is not fast enough, then it defeats the purpose. So RDMA is, gives you the network configuration which is designed for high performance compute and some of the key points you need to be aware of are as follows so first of all it is direct memory access now to understand direct memory access its best way is to understand how two computers would talk to each other in a normal uh, fashion so let's say we are talking we are having an application one here and application two and they are two different computers so the data actually uh, it has to go uh, through various layers, like you have the OSI model, if you think about that in terms of networking. So the data would have to go through the various layers, like from here, the, from buffer one, it goes to the OS layer, right? Or with the help of kernel from the OS layer, it goes to the NIC, which is your network interface card, which is your physical card. From here, the data travels over the network, right? Over the physical network, and then uh, goes to the NIC of the other computer, right? And then it goes up, in terms of the OS, same way, and then it goes to the to the memory of uh, the second computer, and th that way, this um, computer can interact with this computer. Now, if you think about it, uh, then this can really uh, take a long time, right? Uh, and to avoid this kind of um, say delay, um, we have come up with RDMA concept. So, if you see here, what happens? It's a direct memory access. So, from here. Sitting here, you can easily access here. Um, so the data from here, you can easily access here via the RDMA over infinite band. So it's, we are just giving an example that over the with the help of RDMA cluster network, you can uh, directly access the data. You you bypass these layers. So these layers are completely bypassed. So this is not required, and even this is not required, right? So it's a direct memory access. So direct memory access RDMA allows network devices to access the memory. If you see memory of another computer in the network without involving the host uh, operating system. So you're not involving the OS, you're not involving the CPU, nothing is coming into picture or even cache. So this direct memory to memory data transfer enhances the efficiency. Right. So obviously, as I said, uh, why we are doing this, we are just doing it for low latency. Now, uh, for, for the for the newbies, if you, if you are not aware of latency, late, latency is nothing but time delay, right? Time delay is known as latency. So we are trying to avoid that kind of delay. So RDMA networks are known for the extreme low latency and high throughput, right? You want to get the work done, more work done, more complex tasks to be done within less time, right? Which are cru crucial for applications which require rapid data processing and transfer, such as big data analytics, um, AI and all, right? So, and, and obviously, as I said, you are bypassing the layers, right? You are bypassing your um, OS layer. So obviously you are reducing the CPU overhead. So bypassing the host CPU for data transfer, RDMA significantly reduces the CPU overhead. 
So obviously you are reducing your CPU overhead. And yes, RDMA can be implemented over various network protocols, uh, they inclu uh, including InfiniBand. InfiniBand is, is another uh, popular um, protocol. Uh, so guys who have been working on Exadata from ages, since um, uh, several years, uh, Oracle has been using InfiniBand as the fast network within Exadatas or engineered systems. Then recently they've actually come up with a Rocky, uh, which is RDMA over converged Ethernet, which, which is nothing but a network protocol that enables RDMA which is remote direct memory access over an ethernet, right? So this is the beauty of Rocky. And also there is IWOP, which is an internet wide area RDMA protocol, right? Um, and yes, uh, RDMA networks are highly scalable. So that was the whole uh, purpose of what high performance compute, right? You are adding new computers in the cluster, you are dropping the cluster. So th this is really scalable. So it supports the growth of cluster environments seamlessly. This scalability is essential in research and enterprise settings where computing demands may increase over time. So th that's what we saw with HPC, that if your computing demands increase over time, you can always scale up. Once they are down, then you can bring it down. Um, so they, they are quite useful in cluster databases nowadays um, with the um, XR Data Cloud at customer with XR CS, you will see that RDMA uh, or Rocky is being utilized. So RDMA is be beneficial in clustered uh, databases and storage systems where rapid and efficient data transfer between nodes is crucial. Um, application in HPC and cloud computing, yes, they are being used in um, high performance compute and cloud computing. That's why we are studying this. It's widely used in HPC and cloud computing for tasks like parallel computing, right? And scientific simulations, real-time data and analytics. And that's the beauty, right? It is really energy efficient. In today's world um, where people are talking about environment, it's really helpful because uh, by re because you're reducing the CPU load, right? So you are bypassing the CPU overhead and you are optimizing your data transfer. Hence, RDMA networks can also be more energy efficient than the traditional networks, right? And yes, um, there are certain cost considerations which you need to be aware of. Um, they are they are not very cheap. So with, while RDMA provides significant performance benefits, although you are getting the performance benefits, it can be much more expensive, guys. Remember that when you're implementing um, HPCs, remember RDMA cluster networks are expensive to um, to set up uh, than the traditional networking. Due to big, the, the reason is simple, right? You need specialized hardware and maintenance requirements for RDMA cluster network. It's a newer technology as well. So, and and it is not cheap. Uh, it's, it's just the cost that you need to be aware of. So I think the crux of whole uh, lesson is that with high performance compute, you need faster network. And for faster network, the solution we have got is RDMA cluster network, which is remote direct memory access. Again, we, uh, what we are doing is you are able to um, say connect to uh, or, or the data which is sitting in one computer can easily in the memory of one computer can talk to the memory of other computer and bypasses all the layers of kernel, hardware, um, network interface cards and directly access. That's why it's called a direct memory access. Thanks for watching.